I came up with um, to entertain my girlfriend whilst in a pub, a pirate themed pub, I will say. So this is a story called The Legend of the Blue Death. This is a story about a pirate captain named, well, his name was not important. What was important was what they called him. He was known as the Blue Death. The Blue Death was a cruel and paranoid captain who kept most of his treasure to himself and his three lieutenants, all childhood companions of his, who maintained order on the ship and punished dissent mercilessly. He had earned his name from his brutal trademark execution technique. Anyone who crossed the Blue Death would be tied up with rope and lowered slowly, bit by bit, towards the sunlit Caribbean Sea. For days, his victims would suffer incredible thirst, hunger, and sickness, their wails silencing the fearful men on deck, until finally their mouths would fill with salt water and they would finally drown. The story starts after a crewman named Austin led the men and the women of Blue Death's ship in an uprising. Austin was a man from, you guessed it, Missouri, who had come to <laughs> Barbados across the ocean to make his fortune, having a manner of saucy and salacious adventures on his way. He was a clever man, a charismatic man, but not wholly a good one. Austin had to flee Barbados, flee Barbados after a scam he was running was discovered, and the only way he could avoid authorities was by seeking out the legendary Blue Death. After seeing the way Blue Death treated his crew, Austin used his slick words and charm to install bravery. But the revolt failed. Blue Death and his lieutenants were warriors of incredible skill, and eight men were cut down in the attempt, their blood staining the wood beneath them. Only one faced the punishment of being lowered into the ocean, Austin. Austin did not panic as he was captured, nor did he cry out as the rope bit into his body and he was lowered overboard. Austin was a proud man and a thinker, so Austin thought hard about how to get out of his predicament, as all the while the rope was moved ever closer to the waves. Two days into his ordeal, as Austin began to despair, a porpoise drew alongside the ship, following it for hours. Curious and a little bored, Austin asked, Little porpoise, why do you follow the ship? And the porpoise explained to him, in a sing-song voice. Um, the porpoise explained to him that it had a love for shiny things, and he had found golden treasure in the wake of Blue Death's vessel. Doubtful, Austin asked the porpoise to prove his claim. So that night, the porpoise drew alongside the seasick man, and in its mouth was a tiny golden toothpick. Austin said, oh sweet porpoise, won't you lend me your toothpick? And the porpoise knew better than to trust pirates and shook his head. Then let me make you an offer. May I borrow your toothpick if I sing to you? This time the porpoise did not shake his head, and so Austin began to sing. His voice was the most beautiful voice the porpoise had ever heard. Austin had won friends to his side and lovers to his bed with his golden voice. His song was one of love, and it travelled up to the ship where Blue Death's lieutenant, da uh, lieutenant Dagger Lilith, was on watch. Dagger Lilith almost went to punish him, but found herself completely enraptured by Austin's song, for she had not heard anything so peaceful and artful in many long years. She went down to <clears throat> she went down to Austin to listen, and eventually they began to talk. They talked for hours, the costumes of pirate and prisoner fading away in the night air. She even lowered water down to his outstretched hands so that he could refresh his throat and sing more harmoniously for her. The next day, Austin continued to sing, this time songs of battle, of rebellion and pride, of equality and friendship, of danger and reward. The crew heard all his songs that day and could hardly concentrate on their work, for the music made them stop and think of the bodies and the blood and the brutality of their captain. Noticing this, Blue Death roared at them to continue working and lowered Austin even closer to the waves close enough for Austin to take the toothpick offered by the porpoise, who was satisfied that he would never again hear such music from a pirate. At night, Dagger Lilith came to Austin again. This time there was no music. The two simply whispered to each other, as friends, as mutual curiosities. Austin told her about the porpoise and his toothpick, though he did not say that he still held it in his outstretched hand. Lilith was not surprised, 
She told him that Blue Death presented his most trusted crew with a small golden token of treasure as a memento, and that the porpoise must have discovered it from the man who had died in the uprising. Dagger Lilith told him more stories of her childhood growing up with Blue Death, of her desire to one day have her own ship. Austin was grateful for the company, as the night was freezing, and he was very, very alone. Blue Death, however, had <laughs> sensed that something was afoot. He had sent a spy into the night to keep watch on Austin, and the spy reported everything back to the captain. Upon hearing his personal secrets revealed, and that Dagger Lilith had desire to own her own ship and own crew, Blue Death went into a rage, claiming that Lilith would be punished clearly, dearly for speaking words of rebellion. So the next day, Lilith was bound in work, stripped of her weapons and lowered over the side to Austin. The Blue Death announced that a quicker and bloodier fate awaited anyone who dared betray him. Not long afterwards, Austin shouted up to the death, to the deck, Blue Death, I demand you accept my challenge. Defeat me in single combat like a warrior. You with your sword and me with this golden toothpick. <coughs> the winner shall have the ship. And Blue Death, being a prideful, cruel man who enjoyed nothing more than to torture victims, couldn't think of anything more amusing than Austin's challenge. He ordered his men to bring Dagger Lilith and Austin back to the deck. Austin was dragged limply aboard, his body raw and malnourished and bleeding from rope. Blue Death was presented his scimitar, whilst Austin brandished his little golden toothpick. You are a fool for challenging me, said the Blue Death. All the best pirates are fools, said Austin, drawing laughter from the crowd, quickly silenced by a glare from the other lieutenants, who had been looking at Dagger Lilith with pity and fear, for they knew they were no longer immune to Blue Death's punishments. Blue Death approached at a measured pace without any need to rush this. Austin stepped back across the deck, dodging the <coughs> captain's lazy swipes whilst holding his toothpick aloft. Blue Death's laughter filled the sea air. Watch and see what happens to people who rebel on my ship, he announced, and drove forward with a lethal thrust, which Austin quickly dodged. He darted to the side, the sword missing by inches, and ran something across the captain's neck. Blood shot across the deck, and the blue death collapsed, gasping to the ground. And as the pirates looked on in amazement, Austin held up something in his hand, a little golden dagger, sharpened to perfection by Dagger Lilith, her gift from blue death for being so loyal, which she had passed to him in the moment before the battle. The blade had run a lethal line across the pirate's jugular vein. The crew flew into a frenzy, approaching the remaining lieutenants with bloodlust in their eyes. Austin stepped quickly in the way and said, we shall do this by the law of the ship. And so it was that Blue Death was finally lowered into the sea by the ropes he used to torment his victims. Dagger Lilith took command of the ship, promising a better life for all on board, and immediately began to share out the treasure owed to the crew. Austin became a hero, celebrated and loved by all, especially by Lilith. And in the evenings, they would listen to him sing and tell stories of his, Americas, of his uh, adventures between America and Barbados. And the last the world ever saw of the Blue Death's legacy was a tiny glint in the mouth of a very happy porpoise who had taken the captain's golden amulet from his pocket and who vowed to always remember the songs of the man who hung in the ropes. Thank you. Yeah!